What's for dinner? Well, we have something that we both loved. Years ago. Yes. Well, originally it was roast chicken right. with a fig and clementine glaze. Okay, so that's not what we did. No, because you said, oh, roast chicken, chicken anyone can chicken. do that. Why don't I make Cornish hens? Uh, we, we've done that many times over the years. And now... And, and now, we thought, wait a second, why don't we actually try the original idea? Yes. Because uh, we don't have the original recipe. Um, it's I do. You do? But you didn't ask me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> we made it up. So, so good at making she had modified it for the Cornish hands. I modified it back for a roast chicken. Right. So um, the recipe is ours. Yes. So this one's uh, roast chicken and a fig, a fig and clementine glaze. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to marinate your chicken, and I've got it here. This is our chicken. Now, what's in the in the marinade? I'll read it out to you. So it's a quarter cup of olive oil, uh, a teaspoon of ground cumin, two tablespoons of Spanish paprika or regular paprika. A tablespoon of coarse black pepper, a quarter cup of chopped fresh thyme, and oregano combined. Now, I only had fresh thyme. I couldn't find fresh oregano, mm -hmm. such as it is. So I had dried oregano, which is fine. You're, it's a marinade anyway, so uh, you're just going to end up discarding it. And then you need two tablespoons of finely chopped garlic. I did try to stay as close to the original All recipe right, yeah. as possible. <laughs> and then you need a quarter cup of lemon juice. And then, of course, salt and pepper to taste. You'll have to let it marinate for about four hours it says or overnight I do always overnight mm -hmm. which is better I've got my roasting pan here I'm gonna use my um, brand new brand new toaster oven and we're gonna do it in there because we don't want to heat the place up so okay Ooh, smell that oh it's gonna look it's gonna be and taste yummy delish look at this yum okay so full chicken there Wash hands then. Yes. Now what you do is you take your little roaster and you put it, oh, and you drink. Drink? Yes, of course. Always time for a drink. Uh -huh. Okay. So oven is heated. This is a uh, convection toaster oven. So you need um, to reduce your temperature. Now we're going to keep it at 350 mm -hmm. on convection for an hour and a half or two, up to two hours. Now what I did was I covered the tray with foil and put water inside of it. Okay. So we're going to do this. Well, I guess it's time now to do vegetables that goes along with our meal. Okay. The, the roasted uh, chicken, mm -hmm. which is lovely roasting in our my uh, toaster oven. Convection so, oven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're going to make is our uh, stuffed tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So I've made this for like a, uh, years ago, and it was a wonderful recipe. Of course, we can't remember. Can't remember what was in it, so we made it up. Yeah. This so, afternoon. Yeah. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. So. I have some lovely on the vine tomatoes here. So the trick to it is you take your tomato and you cut the top off. Like so. You want to make sure you get nice and big tomatoes. You should take a ugly bowl. If you don't have an ugly bowl, just use a regular bowl. Or a pretty bowl. Or a pretty bowl. Mm. And you're just going to scoop out the inside of your tomatoes. So you're just going to scoop the seeds. The, uh, the inner, so it kind of looks like a bowl. Okay, and then you do it to each one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them over here by me, see? Because I'm going to take out uh, the pieces that I just put in there that are on the thick side, and I'm going to cut them up into smaller pieces. So I was going to suggest that also. Yeah, because you can't. The idea is you're going to stuff these with the innards back into it, so you want small pieces of it. Okay, so we're going to put this back in. What okay. we need is um, we're that silver bag go. Yes, and I figured out what it is. You did, did you? Power of deduction. Yeah, these are panko bread. So. Yes, they are. It's used for tempura. Where's it come from? Japan. Yes, these are Japanese bread crumbs. Uh, well, we said a half to one cup, depending on the size of the tomatoes, and he's eyeballing it. Of course he is. So that's a half to one cup. My version. So I'm just going to mix this up here. So next up we want... Parmesan. Aha, uh -huh, yes. We're going to add some Parmesan cheese yes. to this loveliness. And we said about... Two um, tablespoons, two but tablespoons. once again... So I'm just going to eyeball it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be exact. No. Ever. And if a little extra goes into the pot, do you care? I'm not complaining. I think that's a good, fair measure. 
What's up next? Well, do we want to fight with um, parsley? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to fight with parsley. Yes. Let's mix this up. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to give it some color. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. Okay, so we'll reserve that there. Right the parsley. Mm -hmm. I said a third of a cup, but that's and like a handful. That's a handful. A generous handful. Yeah. Give this a good, quick chop. We love parsley, don't we? Yes, we do. There are amazing things that come from parsley. Yes, it does. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to add this to our bowl. We're gonna add it now. Well, what goes fabulously? Oh, basil. With, yes. So we're gonna eyeball that too. Yeah. I we said, said only a very quarter, and I'm very thinking small we could be a very small amount. Say garlic. Oh, garlic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So a tablespoon or so. Yeah. Yeah. This is Brian Hilenka's official tablespoon. Official tablespoon. And even then, it'll be a heaping one. Yeah, we like garlic. And why not? It should be for. It should, yeah. um, in real life, it would be about two, two teaspoons, two tablespoons. Yeah. So now you know how we figure things out. Okay, salt. We can always add more later. That's okay. about. Uh, that was about a, about a teaspoon. And we like fresh ground pepper. That was a bit more generous. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I add a bit more uh, breadcrumbs. Okay. Okay, so that's what our lovely mixture looks like. So it's full of, mm, full of loveliness. Mm -hmm. Get that with. Oh, yes. It's not very fresh. And each of these go on here. The oven is preheated to 350, and now I'm going to stuff these. Let me do these. The color looks wonderful. It does, yeah. Perfecto. So that is tomatoes. So these will go into the oven for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we're on to the next dish. Yes. Which is uh, an easy one. It's uh, roasted potatoes. Okay. Uh, garlic. So we've got the garlic here. We need an ugly bowl. We have an ugly bowl. Yes. Very convenient. Very convenient. So we'll just take. Yum. That was another Brian Helenka tablespoon. Yeah. yeah. Rosemary. These are rosemary leaves. The dried ones are good. If you have fresh, use those. Mm -hmm. That's about a tablespoon or so. And then you want some olive oil. La. So I'd say that's probably about a, uh, about a third to a quarter. Maybe, maybe I don't think it matters. Really. The combinations, just so long as I mean, if you do it a few times. So well, there's flavor. flavor. Pepper. So about a. I think I'm going to do about a tablespoon of pepper. That's a lot. Uh, That's a lot. <laughs> it's crushed. And about 10 tablespoons of salt. <laughs> I think she kind of figured out that I was kidding. Barely. Barely. She wouldn't put it in the past. Like no. Okay. Now you need spuds. Yes. Little taters. Little taters. So we want to cook these pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take these and we're going to cut them in half. Now, I like was thinking quarters, so we'll check that and see. Because the good thing about quarters is there are more surface area uh, to be uh, coated by the oil and to get the herbs. We will do as the lady suggests. I'm going to stir these together. And you take your potatoes and you put them on here. There 
go. Fabulous. There you have. It. Enjoy. Oh, well, well, when they're cooked. Oh, when they're cooked. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So in the oven for about. Let's. We're gonna try it at the half an hour mark and see yeah. what goes on. See what's happening. The tomatoes are finished, and we put them in for about twenty-five to twenty-seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here they are. They have some beautiful color. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna put them here. Now the potatoes do need to take longer to make. Yep. Yeah. And there's a nice color on that. So let's take a look at the potatoes while we're at it. But they're tiny little bits. Yep. So they are going to need a lot, a few more minutes. Than that, so we're going to put it in for another ten minutes. We're going to do the Brussels sprouts first. Let's get that raw. Okay. Well. So Where for that, we needed, memory serves, a pound of Brussels sprouts, cut up. bottoms trimmed, yep. cut up in half. So we got that. Yes. I have a frying pan here on somewhat medium heat. So we need olive oil. Yes, of course. How much was it? A, a tablespoon. Okay. Generously. And we're adding something to this, so should I add that first, just to get that going, the onions? Uh, yes. Yeah, let's do that, let's cut uh, yes. them going, because we're going to use onions and other things too. Woohoo! Okay. We'll put parsley sprouts in? Yes. And we'll put the other seasonings when they've had a little bit of uh, time uh, to... Uh, we need four strips of bacon, so I'll yes. cut that up. Now the, the original recipe said to use, you know, regular bacon. I love this bacon because it's fast and easy to use. And then you would reserve some of the fat to actually cook in the um, Brussels sprouts. But instead, we're using a tablespoon of olive oil, oil which you know what? I think in the end is actually healthier. Yeah. So this bacon's already been rendered. And it's pretty well cooked. Down, and we just chop it up. Now there should have been a pinch of salt along with the Brussels sprouts. Okay, so I can do that. Now. Salt. A pinch. pinch. Oh, so yes. What I was using is to we have Madame. Oh, oh you said garlic. Garlic. Yes. Did we say garlic again? Again. <laughs> wow. We've got quite a bit of garlic to our stuff today. Okay, so about how much? A tablespoon. Okay. I will. I will try to keep it within yes. reasonable measures. Any other? A teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Oh, yes. Red pepper flakes. I got a bag of walnuts. We couldn't find our almonds, so. But we used our we own used trick one. of substitution. Yep. So if you want to, you can use almonds for this. I'm going to chop these up. And they need about two minutes. What are they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I've got two dishes. So one is for the potatoes, and the other one's for the uh, bristly sprouts. So mm -hmm. we'll take these off. Here we go. How's that? Isn't that beautiful? We're going to do a glaze. And we need some things for the glaze. Yeah. So our chicken stock is how much? Half a cup? A cup. Okay. So this is organic <coughs> low sodium chicken broth. And it's a cup. And you may as well keep that there and add a cup of juice. So it's two cups in total. Yes. Or a cup of sugar. Okay. And now we just have to let that do its thing. Mm -hmm. The second part of the glaze says we have to do something with a whole to bunch of stuff, right? Actually, it's not that much stuff. Oh, what is a tablespoon of olive oil. Where have I heard that before? Really? Olive mm -hmm. oil? Okay. Mm -hmm. One tablespoon. <laughs> and you're going to saute the onion. Oh, okay. So that's the onion. Here. Yes. So we'll saute those. Yeah. Three to five minutes. Okay. So the onions have been done in three to five minutes. All right, we're going to deglaze the pan yep. with an ounce of brandy, but we're being different. Yep, I have corn shrimp sticks. Yes. Which makes sense because it's an orange uh, clementine sauce. Yeah. 